A rectangular post is subjected to three loads as shown in the figure. And we want to determine how much our stress is at point K. K is located 30 millimeter above the x-axis and C above the bottom part of this post. All other dimensions, including the forces and the magnitude of A, B, C, L1 and L2 are also provided for this question. This is a very typical question for combined loading. And if you want to solve this problem, we need to take three steps. The very first step would be determining how much are internal forces at the cut section. It means that you need to cut this post passing through point K and then move all the forces. To do that, I'm going to form a table. How many forces do we expect to see in a general 3D structure? Six. There will be one axial force. Which of these forces would be axial force? The y, because force in the y direction would be perpendicular to the cut section. So I'm going to call it Fy. What are shear forces? X and Z. So I'm going to call them Vx and Vz. Which one would be torque? Torque would be the one that is twisting the section. Put the thumb along the y-axis that is twisting the section. In Another way to determine which one would be torque, the one that is associated with the axial force, the axis that is associated with the axial force would be torque. So tor moment about the y-axis would be torque, so I'm going to use Ty for that. Moment about the x and z-axis are bending, I'm going to use M for that. All right. Now let's write down the forces that we have. First of all, Py. Py is 210 kilonewton. Pz is 95 kilonewton and Px is 65 kilonewton, okay? Now I'm going to write down the components of each of these, the effect of each of these forces on the internal force of the cut section. Um, if I move Py all the way down to the center of the cut section, that acts as, a, as an axial force. So that would be 210. Negative or positive? Because, negative because that is compressing the section. So that would be negative 210 and there is no Vx or Vz because of that. All right, now let's talk about the moments that is produced by moving that force to the centroid. First, we need to move Py to the y-axis by the magnitude of L1. The magnitude of the moment would be simply Py multiplied by L1. We can do that. But which axis gets this moment and the sign is positive or negative? To determine that, we need to use the right-hand rule. Put the fingers downward along the force Py. Curl the fingers toward the direction that you want to move it. That goes to the left side. What is the direction of your thumb? Negative x. That would be negative Py, which is 210, multiplied by L1, which is 50 millimeter. Okay? The second move would be moving that force all the way down to the centroid, because that move would be along its axis there is not any eccentric moment caused by that. So there is not other effect. So that would be zero. All right. Now let's talk about Pz. Pz has a magnitude of 95. First of all, if I move that force to the centroid, that would act as a shear force because that force would be parallel to the cut section. And because that force is opposite to the z-axis, that gets negative sign. So Fy is zero. Vx is 0, and Vz would be negative 95 kilonewton. And now let's talk about the moment produced by moving that force. The first move would be moving that force all the way down to point H. If I move that downward, is there any moment produced by that? Yes, because we are moving that perpendicular to its axis. What, which axis gets the moment? Put the fingers toward the direction of Pz. Curl the finger downward. What would be the direction of thumb? Negative x. So that produces negative moment about the x-axis, and the magnitude of that would be Pz multiplied by A. Pz is 95, and A is 150 millimeter. All right. The second move would be moving that along its axis to the centroid, which doesn't produce any moment. So that's this and there is no other component because of that force. Last force is Px. That produces shear force of x, positive negative because that is opposite to the x-axis, so I'm going to write down negative 65, and Vz would be 0. Now let's talk about the moment. The first move would be moving that force all the way downward 
to the section passing through the cuts of the point K. Note that I'm not going to move that force to point K. I'm going to move that force to the centroid of the section passing through that point. So if I move it downward, which axis gets that moment? Positive Z axis. The magnitude of that would be PX multiplied by A. And the other move would be moving that along its axis to the centroid, which doesn't produce any extra moment. That will be just MZ, and that is 65 multiplied by 150. Okay? Now I'm going to put them together and determine total forces at the cut section. If Y is negative 210, VX is negative 65, VZ is negative 95, there is not any torque. All the TY components are zero. MX has there are two forces that are producing moment about the x-axis, and they are both negative, so I'm going to add them together, and we will get negative 24.75 kilonewton meter, and mz would be positive 9.75 kilonewton meter. Now let's move on to the second part, which is determining the section properties. This is different from the previous problems that we talked about because the section is not symmetric. We are working with rectangular sections, so we need to determine properties of this section for two different axes separately. First, let's determine properties for x-axis. For the x-axis, we need to determine moment of inertia about that axis. The equation is bh cubed over 12. But what is base and what is height? We have already talked about that. Base is parallel to the axis of interest. Axis of interest is x. So base would be 120. Height would be perpendicular to that, which is 160. And if I plug the values, I would get 40.96 million millimeter to the core. All right, now let's talk about Q. The equation for Q is A multiplied by D, area multiplied by distance of centroid to the centroid of the entire section. But what area should I consider for the calculation of Q? That depends on where is the point of interest and what is the axis of interest. The point of interest is K, located 30 millimeter above the x-axis. Then the axis of interest is X. So it means that I need to cut this section passing through point K parallel to the x-axis. And if I do that, I would get this shape. And I need to calculate Q for this hat shape. All right, how much is area of that hat shape? The total height of the section is 160. Half of that is 80. And the point K is located 30 millimeter above the centroid, so the remaining height of that hat section would be 50 millimeter. The area would be 50 multiplied by 120, which is the width of that. What is D here? D is distance of centroid of that hat shape, which is shown by a green point, to the centroid of the entire section. And how much is that? 30 plus D over 2. So that gives me Qx equal to 330,000 millimeter cube. Last part. What is T value, the thickness that I later on need for the calculation of shear stress? Thickness is always the thickness of the cut section that you cut out for the calculation of Q. What is the thickness that you cut? 120 millimeter. All right. Now let's do the same for the z-axis. For the z-axis, um, the axis of interest is z. Base and height are switched in this case, so base would be 160, height would be 120, and I can calculate moment of inertia about the z-axis. QZ for that point. Axis of interest is z. If I cut this section passing through point K parallel to the z-axis, what do I cut? Zero area. So Q for that point would be zero. What would be the thickness in this case if I needed that? 160. All right, we are done with the section properties, and in the last part, we are going to determine stresses. First, I'm going to determine stress produced by the axial load. The pr stress produced by axial load is simply F over A. So look at this section. This section is subjected to a force of negative 210 kilonewton, and because of that, there will be a uniform compressive stress everywhere on that section. And the magnitude of that would be F, which is 210,000 newton, divided by area. We didn't calculate area before. It's very simple. It's 120 multiplied by 160. And I'm just going to plug it here. And we get 10.94 megapascal as compression stress at that point. All right. Now I'm going to 
move on and determine stresses produced by shear force Vx. Tau is Vq over It. But we have two V values, we have two Q values, two I values, and two T values. Which one should we use? If we want to determine shear force for Vx, let me show you that here. This is the Vx. What is the axis of interest for shear force Vx? As we discussed before, Vx belongs to the opposite family, to the Z family. So the axis of interest is Z. And in that case, V gets subscript of X. Everything else gets subscript of Z. And QZ was 0. We calculated that before as 0. So shear stress for that point. Now let's calculate shear stress produced because of shear force Vz. Vz is, it has a value and that is negative. It's negative 95. And that 95 goes to the opposite direction of the z axis. And if I want to determine shear stress produced by that, I'm going to write it as this. Shear stress is Vz multiplied by Qit. Q here would be Qx, I would be Ix, and T would be Tx. And if I plug the values of Qx and Ix and thickness as we calculated before, we get 6.38 megapascal. Here, I don't care about the sign of that. I'm going to determine sign of this later when I want to draw the stress element. Okay? All right. Now let's talk about the bending stresses. There are two bending moments in this case, Mx and Mz. I'm going to start with Mx. The bending stress would be Mc over I. Mx belongs to the X family, so everything get in that equation gets subscript of X. And stress distribution, because of that, would be like this. It is producing compression on the right side, tension on the left side. And if I plug the values here, I would get stress equal to negative 18.13 megapascal. And stress produced by Mz, I'm going to show it here. That would be like this. At this point, it gets tension because of the direction of moment about the z-axis. So if I plug the values here, we get 25.39 megapascal. Now we are ready to go ahead and determine the stress element at that point. How much is the total normal stress? Total normal stress is the axial stress plus the bending stresses produced by moment z and moment x. And if I add them together with the correct sign, we will get negative 3.67 megapascal. And for shear, there was just one shear stress, and that is 6.38. What is the direction of that shear stress? Direction of shear stress follows the direction of shear force. That goes to the right side. If I want to draw the stress element on the green surface, the shear stress goes to the right side. The magnitude of that is 6.38 and compressive stress of the normal stress is negative 3.67. That is the 3D stress element. If I want to write the 2D stress element, I would simply look at that from the purple surface, and in that case, I would see this shape. The total compressive force is negative 3.67, and shear force would be 6.38.